Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us this evening as we share a welcome to kindergarten at District School Board Ontario Northeast. Uh, we're happy to have you joining us tonight and we hope you find this evening uh, informative and helpful. We'd like to begin with a land acknowledgement. We respectfully acknowledge that we are situated on the traditional territories of the Cree, the Ojibwe, the Oji Cree, the Algonquin peoples, and the Métis who have chosen to settle in this area. And at District School Board Ontario Northeast, when we do a land acknowledgement, we are committing to actions to better serve our students, families, and staff who identify as First Nation, Métis, and Inuit. Our work is always rooted in our vision of empowering all learners to achieve personal excellence. And we're excited to share with you this evening of how we start this journey with our youngest learners as they enter our schools. And is guided by our mission of inspiring innovation and a passion for learning with all learners. The work is always guided by our priorities of culture, equity, and innovation. So I'd like to begin with a quick round of introductions of who is joining us tonight. We do have um, our Director of Education, Leslie Dye, joining us this evening. We have myself, Chad Mowbray, Superintendent of Education uh, with the um, Southern Schools from Kirkland Lake through to Tomogamy, but also overseeing uh, learning and teaching. We have uh, Tanya Vince, our Early Years Lead. We're lucky to also have Carrie Stack joining us, a K-6 Learning Coach. We've got Joan Vardy Gibson, a kindergarten teacher from Joseph H. Kennedy Public School joining us. We have Melissa Danko, another kindergarten teacher joining us. We have Kara Mowbray, a kindergarten teacher joining us. And we also have Leslie Skippers, an early childhood educator joining us this evening as well. I would now uh, like to pass it over to uh, Kara Mowbray, who's going to give us a brief introduction about kindergarten registration, transportation, and the kindergarten program. And over to you. Children begin a lifetime of learning at home. Kindergarten introduces them to the school years and helps to widen their learning horizons. These early years in education involve tremendous growth and learning. Parents and school staff working together as partners can help to ensure all children fully develop their potential. Registering your child for kindergarten is an important milestone. We are so proud that you have chosen DSB1 for your child's education. We wish you and your child a warm welcome and a future of exciting learning experiences. Families can register their child online through the student registration page found on the DSB1 website. When you register your child, you will need proof of your child's age, their immunization records, and proof of residence. You might also require immigration papers and court documents if this is applicable to you. All kindergarten students have the opportunity to take the bus to school. JKSK students or kindergarten year one, year two students must have a family member at the bus stop with them for both pickup and drop off. We would like to stress the importance of families being on time to meet your child from getting off the bus. If families are not present for a safe drop off, students will be brought back to the school and supervised in the office where parents will then be notified to come and pick them up. If your child will be riding a bus to and from school on a regular basis, it is best to have them arrive to school on their first day by bus. We understand that this is an exciting time for families, but it is so much easier for your child to walk away from you to get on a bus than it is to have you walk away from them at school. There may be tears, but they will quickly recover with all the fun and excitement of the day. When arriving at school, there will always be an educator to greet your child. It is best to have a consistent drop off and pickup routine. If pickup or drop off arrangements change, it's important to communicate these changes early in the day because the end of the day is a very busy time in our kindergarten classrooms. Sharing information about who is picking up and when will avoid any anxiety that these changes may cause for our young students. 
if these different arrangements are not communicated with educators, we are obliged to send the children home on the bus. There are situations in which buses may be canceled due to inclement weather. All current busing information can be found on the DSB1 webpage by clicking on the bus icon and parents will also receive email notifications if buses are canceled. Kindergarten children are energetic, lively, sensitive, curious, and creative. They learn best in an active setting, manipulating and playing with materials, investigating, observing, experimenting, inquiring, drawing conclusions, and interacting with others. Your child will have many experiences in the kindergarten years that will prepare him or her for meeting expectations as outlined in the program. Since children develop at different rates and in different ways, the program is flexible and diverse. The two-year program integrates inquiry learning with intentional and explicit teaching through small group, one-on-one, -on -one, and whole group instruction. The overall expectations of the kindergarten program are connected to the four frames, which include belonging, contributing, problem solving and innovating, demonstrating literacy and mathematics behaviors, and self-regulation and well-being. Your child's day will be filled with a variety of hands-on experiences. The educator team will interact and work with your child in a variety of settings, both indoors and out, and participate in individualized small group and whole group learning. Math, reading, and writing skills will be explored throughout the day through play experiences. We value the curiosity and wonderings of our youngest learners. I would just like to add that if you do have questions tonight um, during this presentation, to please just write them in the chat and they will be either answered as we go with the with typing or they'll be at the time at the end when Chad will that Chad Mulberry will take to answer some of those questions. So as one of Canada's two official languages, French as a second language is taught in all schools within DSB1. Students have significant advantages when they speak more than one language. Learning another language helps students strengthen their problem solving, reasoning and creative thinking skills, develop their understanding and appreciation of diverse cultures, increase their competitive and in an increasingly global job market. DSB1 provides core French or French immersion programming beginning in kindergarten. This early introduction to learning a second language builds a strong foundation and sets our students up for success in our bilingual regional context and beyond. Your child will be immersed in the French language during their day at school. Families of French immersion students are not expected to know French. Although French is the language of the class, communication between the school and home is always in English. The French immersion program is designed for English speaking families and all communication sent home will be in English. Families can connect with the school principal and their children's teachers to learn more about the French immersion or core French program homework expectations, and how to support their children's success. The educator team. When a year one and year two classroom has a total of 16 or more students, an educator team consisting of a teacher and a designated early childhood educator working, work together to facilitate experiences that are child-centered, developmentally appropriate, and one that promotes the physical, social, emotional, and cognitive development of all children. An early childhood educator specializes in age appropriate and culturally responsive program planning. The teachers and early childhood educators create rich learning environments that are safe, caring, accepting, challenging, and stimulating. Children are expected to think, to notice, to question, to explore, to discover, and to make connections. The educators carefully observe each child in order to know his or her growing capabilities and then provide appropriate learning experiences. Flow of the day. In kindergarten, the flow of the day considers a flexible plan that includes a variety of learning experiences for your child. This daily schedule incorporates a variety of routines and activities, including whole group and small group learning time. Inquiry learning, which embeds play and exploration with a wide variety of materials. 
literacy and mathematics focused lessons and activities, daily outdoor learning time, as well as weekly opportunities for gym, music, health, and French instruction. How learning happens in kindergarten. Play is the children's natural way to making sense of the world. Children learn when all their senses are actively involved. They need to talk and think about everything they do. This is why our kindergarten classrooms are active environments where children are involved with ideas, feelings, and concept. Research indicates that play is the way young children learn best. At DSB1, educators work hard to create learning experiences both inside the classroom and outside. Kindergarten classrooms are filled with opportunities to investigate, problem solve, and collaborate as they explore a variety of materials and instruction. These opportunities will help your child to think creatively, explore and investigate, solve problems, and share learning with others. Inside the classroom, children explore with blocks, water and sand while making connection to mathematics. Students are, have opportunities to read and write and tell stories to their educators and peers. Outside of the classroom, students continue to make connections to language and math as they explore the outdoor learning spaces. Your children will make connections with the natural world through their interactions with natural loose parts and materials such as buckets, scoops, wheelbarrows, planks, tires, and mud kitchens to name a few. Outdoor learning has important and well-documented benefits for children's health and development and well-being. DSB1 is committed to the development of students' self-regulation and curiosity through outdoor education. Many of our DSP1 schools have outdoor learning spaces created by Beanstalk Natural Playgrounds, which allow the children to use their senses through big body play and exploration. Outdoor learning happens every day, no matter what the weather, for at least 50 minutes per day on top of their scheduled recess times. DSP1 educators work hard to plan intentional outdoor experiences, which foster community partnerships and a lifelong respect for the land. Students engage with materials found in their natural environment to develop literacy, mathematics, self-regulation, and problem-solving skills. A variety of activities will engage your child in meaningful experiences, which are foundations for reading, writing, speaking and listening, viewing and thinking. Language and literacy opportunities are intentionally embedded throughout our child's day as they experience books, poems and songs, listen to and tell stories, imagine, wonder and think, talk about and or express their thoughts and feelings, read and write, engage in dramatic play and role playing, explore, investigate, create and represent, and explore technology. Mathematics instruction through whole group, small group, and one-on-one -on -one experiences are supported as children become aware of color, shape, size, and numbers, classify, sort, and compare, experiment, solve problems, explore plug, uh, plugged and unplugged coding, explore sand and water, and think and make decisions. During the school day, your child will benefit from being able to socialize with other children and educators. This helps your child develop the social and emotional skills that are necessary for future success in school and beyond. Students engage in recess time in playgrounds that are supervised by two to three educators. Some schools may have separate playgrounds for kindergarten and other schools, the students are with other primary grade classes. This is a wonderful opportunity for your child to see and play with other children and develop their relationships through unstructured play outside. Communication between the teacher and home is important. You will learn about your child's growth at school in formal and informal ways. You're encouraged to send notes, to make phone calls, or have a chat at the end of the day when you wish to share information or ask questions. It is important to share any concerns or ask questions so your child's school experiences remain positive. If a major issue or concern arises, reach out to the educators and a conference can be arranged. Each class has a system of regular communication with home. You may receive newsletters, monthly calendars, phone calls, or notes. Kindergarten educators at DSB1 also use a platform called Seesaw which allows you to digitally communicate with the educator team and you can see photos and videos of your child's learning as it happens in the classroom.
Seesaw also allows your child's educators to share announcements and important reminders with you in real time. Throughout the school year, you will be provided with information regarding your child's strengths, growth, and demonstrated learning. The educator team will document and share with you your child's learning through notes, digital resources, emails, and phone correspondence. Kindergarten students also receive three communication of learning reports, which demonstrates growth within each of the four frames of the curriculum. These reports help families to understand their child's progress during the course of the school year. The first initial observations report will be sent home in early November. This report provides you with an overview of observations of your child's learning since the start of the school year and early evidence of growth in learning. This is a great way to support families in developing a positive relationship as partners who share the goal of helping children to be successful. The reports will give you information about appropriate next steps to support your child's learning both at school and at home. All school information can be found on the DSB1 website. If you are looking for a school address, name of the principal and secretary, or a phone number, simply visit www.dsb1.ca, click on the Schools tab, and use the search bar to find your school. DSB1 also has an outstanding social media presence with a Facebook page, Twitter, and Instagram account, as well as a YouTube page. Kindergarten is an active environment. Comfortable and casual clothing will let your child participate without worrying about getting messy. In kindergarten, we help children develop independence. Your child will learn to dress and undress as independent as possible. So it helps if the clothes are easy to take on and off. Please try to send a second change of clothes in a labeled bag to be kept at school, just in case. It is helpful for your child to have more than one pair of shoes, one for indoors and one to wear outside. Please send shoes that have a rubber sole and are easy for your child to put on. Velcro shoes are a good choice. Your child also needs a bag that is large enough to hold a lunch and books. Labeling all of your child's belongings, including clothing, backpacks, and lunch containers will help to keep their things organized. Outdoor activities are part of the daily kindergarten program. When you help your child dress for school, consider the weather so he or she will be comfortable outside. Your child will need a lunch bag or box that can be easily open and closed. It's important to pack foods that are easy to open independently and can be repacked if not finished and that are peanut and nut free if the school identifies an allergy. On your school's very first day of kindergarten, be calm and positive about the new experience. Talk about the fun things your child will be doing. Saying goodbye is not easy on the first day. Give your child a magic kiss on their hand. These kisses don't wash off and can be used whenever your child feels lonely or misses their family. Reassure your child that you know he or she will be fine. Give your child another kiss and then calmly leave. It is usually easier for a tearful child to calm down when a parent is not there. Most schools at DSB1 are on a balanced day schedule, meaning that they have two opportunities throughout the day to have a snack and enjoy some time outside. Some families choose to send two separate containers so their child knows which snack to have in the morning and which container is for lunch. Many schools also participate in a snack or breakfast program, and this will be communicated to you early in the school year. Your child should have a labeled water bottle that they can keep at school. All DSB1 schools have water stations which allow them to fill their water bottles if needed. Some schools also offer a milk program or a hot lunch day. Again, this will be communicated to you from the school, and you can choose to participate if you'd like. Students identified with allergies are communicated to all staff and handled case by case based on the severity. Some schools may be nut or fish free. Your child's teacher will inform you if nuts or other allergens are not allowed. When students are eating, there is always an adult supervising and support is always available for kinder students if they need help while enjoying their food. 
Many families ask us what they can do to support their child's transition to kindergarten. Work with your child to build independence. Encourage your child to try to do things on their own, such as zipping up zippers, putting on their shoes and jackets, and opening and closing lunch containers. Kindergarten children use the washroom independently while at school. Be sure your child can wash hands with soap and water and manage clothing as independently as possible. Developing a healthy level of independence is important as it helps to increase your child's self-esteem and gives them more confidence when trying new activities. Giving your child lots of opportunities and time to practice independence will give them the confidence and make them proud of what they can do. Young children are very curious about the world around them and they love to explore, experiment and manipulate materials. This exploration helps them learn many important skills in math and language, but it also gives a foundation for science, the arts and healthy living. There are many ways that you can support your child as they explore the world around them. You and your child can spend time playing outside, go to the park, throw a ball, take a walk or ride your bikes. Active children are more likely to grow up to be healthy, active adults. Enjoy the world around you. Take time to explore nature with your child. You can watch worms after it rains, dig in the garden and plant seeds, collect leaves or admire the snowflakes. Talk about what you see and do. Be creative. Provide your child with opportunities to use art materials such as scissors, markers, glue, paint or crayons. And sing, dance and make music together. Listen to your favorite songs and dance to your favorite music. Mathematics is also all around us. There are so many opportunities for early math and you can support your child in early math skills by sorting items from home with your child, such as cutlery, laundry, games, and toys. You can count a variety of items around your home, such as toys, how many steps it takes to get to the corner, how many people are at the table, buttons or street lamps, sing counting songs and read counting books. Cook together. Cooking is filled with math. Talk about measuring, pouring, timing, and counting. Point out and name shapes and patterns in your home and community. Measure things. Check the temperature. Pick out the biggest apple or compare the size of two leaves, for example. Play in the sand and play in the bathtub. Playing with sand and water will help your child learn many math concepts. Reading aloud is the best way to prepare children to learn to read. It will help them develop a wide range of language skills needed for success in school and throughout life. In addition, there are many other fun things that you can do together to help with growth and learning and literacy. Cuddle up and read. Talk about books, look at the pictures, talk about ideas and new words. Use funny voices when you read. Laugh, snuggle and have fun while reading your favorite stories. Let your child see you read. Your child will copy what you do. The public library is a great source of books and other texts that you can explore with your child and consider getting your child his or her own library card and enter a world full of adventure. Words are everywhere. Your child's world is filled with words on cereal boxes, on street signs, stores and posters. Pick out and talk about words and letters that you see whenever you can. Sing songs and recite poems and nursery rhymes. This will help your child develop an ear for language. Encourage your child to ask questions and use their words to communicate. And write with your child. Provide materials like pencils, markers, and paper for writing activities. Have your child begin to identify his or her name and also draw pictures and tell stories. And finally, play games. Play guessing games and board games, finger paint, or make words with magnetic letters or alphabet cereal. Wow, kindergarten has uh, and early years learning has changed so much uh, over the last decade uh, and beyond. It's incredible the type of learning that you can see that does go on in our early years uh, programming. And it's just a beginning of their 14 year journey uh, in education. And as you can see, though, there is a lot of really important learning. And that's why regular uh, daily attendance is critical for our early uh, primary learners as it sets those positive school routines and habits. 
just asking you a quick question just to reflect um, and to just predict in your own mind, what percentage of kindergarten students do you think miss more than 20 school days in a year? So just think about that. Pick a percentage. And it may surprise you to know that when we really look at our attendance data, uh, the data from today, uh, this afternoon, as of today, 54.6% of our K-1, which are what you might be used to calling junior kindergarten learners, have missed 20 or more school days to date. And 51.6% of our K-2 students have missed 20 school days or more so far to date. Um, students who miss two or more school days per month are significantly less likely to be reading at grade level by the time they reach the end of grade three. Regular and punctual attendance is important as it sets the tone for students' entire educational career. As you can see from the learning, there's a lot of learning that happens in kindergarten. It's It may be play-based, but there's still a lot of learning connected to math and to literacy and social emotional skills and socialization. That it's really important that they're there and it sets the stage for the rest of their learning journey for the next 14 years. Regular attendance increases your child's ability to form bonds with other students uh, and educators, creating a sense of belonging, and it facilitates their ability to contribute to learning and group dynamics and to work within a group. Regular and punctual attendance for students learning uh, a second language is important as well. Literacy and vocabulary lessons are often taught during the first instructional block in the morning when our learners are the freshest. So even being late and missing that morning block can have a profound impact on their learning to read and learning to write. Missing just two days of school a month means that a child will miss 10% of the school year and students who miss two days per month are significantly less likely, as I shared, to be reading by end of uh, grade level at grade three. Now, there are a variety of reasons why our youngest learners may uh, seek to avoid school. Uh, some of our youngest learners may try to avoid school for a variety of reasons. It could be they're anxious about not being home with you. Maybe they're anxious about a new place. Um, maybe they're unsure about new friends and new places or new routines and structures. And this anxiousness can lead to school avoidance and it takes a variety of forms. Um, it could be, I don't feel well today. It could be, I feel tired. Uh, I don't have any friends. And so how do you deal with that kind of school avoidance? The first thing is to address that avoidance early. Um, as soon as you hear it, have a conversation about that with your child. You might ask a question like, what is making school feel so hard? After they've shared that, then you're gonna wanna communicate that with the classroom team. You may say to your learner, thanks for sharing that. I'm gonna talk to your teacher and your ECE about blank, whatever they said, but it's still important for you to go to school. Other ways to deal with it is to be firm about attending school, but empathetic. Um, your child being empathetic, but being firm on the fact that they need to attend school. You might say something like, I know you might be nervous or scared about school, but I know you can do it and you need to go to school. It's really important for you and for us. Or you could say, I know feeling tired doesn't feel good, or I know having a tummy ache doesn't feel good, but it's really important that you go to school. One of the other strategies that you can try that um, if a child does need to stay home, you're going to wanna make sure that the home environment is not too tempting um, and calling them to want to be home. So you might say something like, staying at home isn't going to be fun. If you're staying home, you must be quite sick and you're gonna to need to rest and you're not gonna be able to watch TV or play video games. But it's really important that you have some of these phrases and some of this language to help you address some of the school avoidance. Typically, you won't see school avoidance in the first one to two weeks of school, but you might start to see it emerging around that second week or that third week mark, where they're starting to realize that this is a different routine in place. And so it's important to have some of these skills and phrases ready to help with that. At this point in time, I would like to hand it over to Lead Vince, who is going to talk about how we can build good attendance habits and routines. So here are some tips that can help your child look forward to attending school every day. So before school begins, have some adventure time. 
Take your child to visit the school during an open house or visiting the schoolyard or an interview session. And most schools do hold open houses or interview sessions during the spring. Visit neighbor with neighbors or friends who are going to the same school and explore possibly pick up or drop off sharing plans with neighbors. Have story time. Tell your child positive stories about when you were a young student. Make up silly songs about everyday routines such as getting up in the morning, eating breakfast, going to school. Read to your child every night in your home languages. In your home language, books can address child's concerns in playful ways and support conversations and have habit time. Get, get a standard bed and wake up time a few weeks in advance of the start of school. Let your child choose what clothes they would like to wear the next day. Routine makes Routines make everyone feel in control and that's a really good feeling. As, as uh, Superintendent Mowbray did say, uh, many children adjust really easily to kindergarten, but some do feel overwhelmed at times and need that little extra support. So here are five tips to manage those times and make school enjoyable an enjoyable experience for your child. Reassurance and support. Reassure your child that school is a safe and fun place to be where they will make many friends. Tell them that it's important to go to school and that the teacher and early childhood educator are there to help and care for them. Talk about some of your positive school experiences as mentioned before. Ensure that they go to school every day as keeping them home will only cause more anxiety. Communication with the school team. Inform the classroom teacher and early childhood educator that your child is struggling, that they will provide the extra reassurance for your child at school, help solve possible triggers and conflicts or conflicts causing the anxiety, and will inform you of progress. You can work together as a team. Send a personal item to school. Let your child know that you are thinking of them and help bridge the separation even when they are at school. Send a photo of your family or maybe a heart shaped paper with the words I love you written on it. When they need the encouragement, they can hold on to it and touch it and that will help reassure them. Get plenty of sleep. Those first few weeks of school in particular, in particular are exhausting for most children and especially for those who are attending for the first time. A good sleep routine is so beneficial. So we suggest that you make sure that they get 11 to 12 hours of sleep every night. This will ensure that they are ready to learn and will help them cope, better cope with their emotions and find time to share feelings. Let them take the lead and decide when they are ready to talk. Some, actually many need to decompress after a long day and will only open up later in the evening. Allow them to express their feelings and provide and provide them with your full attention. In order to support you, our families, uh, we have created a file that you can access and which can, contains resources for you, including a Welcome to Kindergarten cookbook, information about play-based learning, report cards and learning through inquiry, uh, a ministry question and answer guide for families, a family activity book for early learners, and a document entitled Supporting Your Child in Reading and Write Math Writing Mathematics. You can use your camera to access the code, but also this link, the link to these resources and the recording of tonight's presentation will be emailed to you as well. Thank you very much to all of the presenters for sharing such wonderful information about early learning uh, at DSB1. Uh, it's a, an incredible time to be in. A, I could I would love to go back to an early learning classroom and spend time there. It's one of the most exciting places when we visit our schools. At this point in time, we would like to open it up to questions. And so as a reminder in the YouTube stream uh, next, right next to the video on the right hand side, there's a little chat pod where you can type in questions. Uh, and so I have those questions will pop up on my screen. So we did have one question already about how do we go about applying for transportation? So transportation is done automatically for you uh, if you qualify for transportation. And as shared earlier in the presentation, um, all JK and SK students uh, do qualify for transportation. After er, later grades, there starts to be a walking distance that increases, but JK and SK students qualify for busing. And so that process happens automatically for you. Um, as we get closer um, uh, to the end of the year, uh, and again in the fall, uh, in August, the school will uh, share out, uh, email you your information around how to log into the Northeast Tri-Board Bus Consortium. 
Uh, that link I posted in the uh, chat pod for you so you can see you would just click on that link and you would scroll down a little wee bit and then you click log in now but the package you'll get from your school uh, will have the information on how to log in and as always if you're not sure of the steps your friendly neighborhood school secretary uh, is uh, the keeper of all sorts of wonderful information and knowledge and can assist you with this uh, as well uh, so can your school principal uh, so those are uh, supports that you can use to access that um, now another question that has come in do we get copies of the daily schedules uh, and curriculum so uh, the curriculum uh, document uh, is available on the Ministry of Education website, but we can make sure that the kindergarten uh, document uh, is included in the email that comes out to you. But you will get a copy of what your uh, child's uh, schedule looks like. Um, all of our uh, early years uh, educator team uh, send out the schedule so you have a sense of what the rhythm of the day looks like um, for um, uh, for your learners and for, for the day. Uh, so yes, you will get a copy of the schedule that kind of breaks down what subjects they have when and that kind of thing, uh, as well as the, the times for the school and, and that kind of thing. It's also available on the school website around the bell times as well for the, the daily schedule of when uh, nutrition break is and when activity period outside is. Can we use the bus only before school if we're using after school care? Yes, so that is something that we do uh, if you have after school care uh, and you're in a provider that is at the school, yes. But if your after care is a babysitter, for example, um, we have to do some checking. So there's a way to uh, on the net try bus board. There's a way to do a special transportation request and your school secretary can help you fill those out. Uh, and we take a look at those to see if they're in bounds. But um, usually uh, if you don't need to take the bus in the after afternoon because you have child care uh, at the end of the day, that is absolutely OK. There is a requirement, though, that you maintain a certain percent percentage of traveling on the bus, uh, a, a certain percentage of days. Uh, if you're not on the bus for, um, I don't remember the exact percentage, I think it's was 75% or 80%. Uh, if you're not on the bus at that percentage of days, uh, then busing privileges uh, will be uh, revoked uh, because we don't want to have empty buses uh, driving around, especially with our challenges with um, the, the bus driver shortage. Any other questions? Um, I've seen a picture of iPads in the classroom. Is this a part of learning? Uh, we don't allow our children to have electronics like iPads and such. So it's a great question. Um, so at District Scoreboard Ontario Northeast, from grade four up, there is an iPad uh, one to one for students. And in the kindergarten classroom, there's a small set of five. But there's a couple things to know that it's they're not playing games when they do use the iPad. Uh, they may be using a app that helps with letter ID. Uh, so like naming uh, letters and drawing letters. Um, the applications uh, that do get used are, are all vetted through uh, the education team. Uh, we check the privacy rules uh, around that and it's not free time on the iPad. Uh, students may, for example, uh, learn about shapes uh, uh, and basic shapes and they take the iPad and they walk around and they take pictures of where they see circles and where they see triangles and squares and they use that to document their learning. Um, but if they do use an iPad, it is uh, supervised. Looking for any other questions? And two, if any time, if any of the educators, if you want to jump in to uh, share to the responses, uh, please feel free to do so. Okay, just looking for any more questions coming in. I'll just wait about 30 seconds because there is a bit of a delay when the questions come in, so we'll just wait a little wee bit. All right. I don't see any additional questions coming in. So at this point in time, I would like to um, pass the presentation over to Leslie Dye, our Director of Education. 
Thanks so much, Chad. And before I thank our families, I really do want to express my appreciation to all of our presenters this evening. Uh, it's a beautiful summer evening and really appreciate you extending your workday. Uh, so to Chad, Joan, Kara, Carrie Stack, Leslie and Melissa, Thank you uh, for your messaging and for your work. And of course, Larry Soudier, part of our information services team. Larry, we always rely on you and you always come through. Thank you. Uh, to our families, miigwech, merci, and thank you for joining us this evening. If you're a child and if you are brand new to DSB1, we gave you an incredible amount of information. Uh, you're probably at this point uh, not retaining all of that and you've heard from a couple of us how you will get this information. Our schools, our elementary schools do close on June 23rd. So if you've got any questions uh, to your child's school, please approach the school before or on June 23rd. And then they open again on Monday, August 28th. So lots of good suggestions uh, in terms of thinking about August, those routines that are so helpful for your child and so helpful for you and your home. Want to wish everyone a beautiful rest of the evening. And if there's anything we can do to further support you and your child in welcoming you to DSB1, please reach out to us. Thanks so much, everyone. Have a great evening. Bye-bye.